Kutch is back and Kutch is back for all the right reasons at exactly the right time. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dayon Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins that I'd invite you to check out. One year, $5 million, not overcommitted, hardly overpriced. Kutch can still play. Kutch can still set an example. And, oh, by the way, the team has quite the need in the outfield positions. And no, I'm not going to be one of those people who gets past the sappy component here. Because Kutch has a connection to this city. I did an entire episode of this very show just two weeks ago telling you about how Kutch and his wife Maria and their family are dedicated to Pittsburgh. Their foundations still do all of their off-season work here in Pittsburgh. When Kutch last played here, he lived right downtown, rode a scooter over the Clemetti Bridge to the ballpark. He's deeply invested in the Steelers and the Penguins, and he's just pure Pittsburgh. I am not going to ignore that. I am not going to tiptoe around it. Maybe the team has to, so it doesn't look like some kind of PR move, but I won't. This team, oh my goodness, this team needs something, anything remotely resembling a good positive feel from the outside. And no matter what it is that you think of the way the organizations run, what you think of Bob Nutting specifically, when 22 steps into the box, you're going to pause. And if you're a little bit older, you're there with family, you're going to remind your kids or let them know who this is and why you're standing and cheering for that guy. And that's a good thing. This franchise has been here for 137 years, and it's only in the past decade and a half that it's been completely okay to dump all over it. Let everyone see what it's like when Kutch comes into the box as a bucko. Because we saw it in recent summers. We saw it just this past summer. Every single time the Brewers were here, he played because Craig Council is not a dummy. Every single time Kutch came into the box, whether it was his first at bat or his fourth, he'd get the same reception. And I remember vividly thinking to myself on those occasions, I wonder what Ben Charrington's thinking when he sees this. I wonder what any of these guys, and Derek Shelton, who are watching another team's player come to the plate and get that kind of reception from Pittsburghers that no one on the current team does. Because in, in fairness, and I'm not even being critical here, they weren't here. They don't know what that was like. They were both in the other league. They might think the city just sucks or hates baseball or whatever. And yet, when 22 would come to bat, all of a sudden, Pittsburgh was a baseball town again. Just for those few seconds. Yeah, I'll take that back. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Now, of course, what matters here, and believe you me, it'll be what matters most to Kutch himself, is that he can still play. Kutch isn't the type to go embarrassing himself. Uh, when he suited up for the Brewers this past season, he knew he was joining a team that was a contender. He and I talked about that at length up there in Milwaukee in the opening month of the season. He ended up slashing 237, 316, 385, which isn't peak Kutch. He did have 17 home runs, and one thing he's been able to do since he left Pittsburgh on a continuous basis, whether it was in New York or Philadelphia or anywhere else is hit home runs. And he did send 17 out 
this past season. Had a 1.1 war, which tells you pretty much where he is at this point in his career. He is above an average replacement player. But he also would have been the third best hitter in this lineup last season. Now, I know that's not the bar by which anyone would want to be judged, but that's the bar that's here. You wouldn't want him in center field at this stage, but you also know that you can have him in either right or left, depending, really, the priority being what you want to do with Jack Sawinski. Heck, it might even be set up so that Kutch is more of an in-and-out kind of guy in that outfield where there's more of a four-man rotation because you do want to have Jiwon Bay involved. You do want to have uh, Kanan Najigba Smith involved. You want to have other guys, uh, Cal Mitchell maybe, whoever it is that impresses and makes the team as a young player, you don't want to bury them. But really, between that and Kutch being 36 years old and the Brewers having utilized him in kind of an in-and-out way, he played more than he didn't. But also with the the bigger gap in Kutch's splits where he really still hits lefties, but he's not hitting righties as well as he used to. I don't think it'll be that tough of a call as to whether or not uh, the Pirates would feel comfortable telling him, hey, you're going to play, you know, four or five games a week at the most. But he can help. He can help with the credibility. And by that, I'm not even talking about to the outside. I'm talking about on the inside. He's going to be in that clubhouse as the living embodiment of the last time the Pirates were any good. The rest of the players, even including the main guys, presuming Brian Reynolds is still here, Brian Hayes, players like that, Mitch Keller, who've been around for a while, are going to watch the way reporters like me interact with Kutch and watch how people just flock to him, cameras and microphones flock to him and understand that this is someone who's very special in the city. They're going to be in the dugout and on the field when they experience the adulation of the PNC Park crowd. My goodness, imagine the home opener for themselves, but not with him in a Milwaukee uniform. Okay, they're going to see, wow, we are so very much in this guy's shadow in this city. And there's an element of humility that comes with it. But also maybe some plausible reality that, hey, this guy was here not that long ago in the playoffs. This guy was here not that long ago on a 98 win team. Maybe we can do that, too, because all of these guys, every last one of them, who's on this roster other than Kutch, was here for nothing but absolutely awful baseball. They don't know any different. They haven't experienced any different. I'm talking about the longer-term younger Pirates, like Reynolds and Hayes and Keller and so forth. They've never seen anything else. And now here's this guy who's wearing the same uniform in which he succeeded. Pluses, 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 nothing but kudos all around to everyone from Bob Nutting on down. This needed to happen. This finally did happen. When we come back, J1Q. comes from Dave, who says, DK, I wish I could be more positive about the Kutch signing, but something about these past 30 years has me just a little bit less than hopeful. If you can convince me that Kutch's signing was for something other than filling the seats, I'm all ears. Dave, first of all, it's not my job to convince you of anything. It's my job as I see it on this show or in writing columns or whatever else, is to express my own opinion. I am never, ever, 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 ever in the business or operating with the intent of trying to convince anybody of anything. Always feel like that's worth reminding. That said, I've got some stuff to share on this subject that's my opinion. Whether or not it convinces you, that's up to you. I can tell you this much to start off with. Kutch isn't filling any seats. Uh, PNC Park will not be filled in 2023. I've heard tickets are up, meaning sales are up, 
over what they'd been the past couple of off seasons. But then the past couple of off seasons, you know, everything was still coming off COVID. So I'm not sure that means anything at all. And I don't think that Pittsburghers are stupid people. I don't think anybody expects Kutch to come here and perform the way he did in 2012 and 2013. It's just, you know, it, it doesn't take some sort of deep inside baseball knowledge to figure that out. Now, can it maybe lessen some of the hostility that exists, lessen some of the uh, the protest-minded thought processes that are out there? Yeah, I, I think you're going to see some people go, you know what, I hate this owner and I hate this and I hate that, but I'm going this weekend and I'm just going to cheer for Kutch. Could there be some kind of impact like that? Yeah, but the better answer that I have for you here is this. And believe it or not, I don't think the Pirates are going to like this one very much. This owner, this team president, and this general manager have shown absolutely zero proclivity for public relations to this point with this front office and really this owner since the very beginning. They have no earthly idea how to communicate with the fan base, and this offseason – they just decided they're not going to do it at all. Cancel Pirates Fest, cancel the caravan, not really meeting with many season ticket holders or anything like that. There have been a couple of isolated sessions. They're hardly talking to reporters. They've just hunkered down. They've hunkered down. They're hiding under their desks, waiting, I think, for things to get a little bit better on their front, such as, you know, signing Kutch, at which point they can emerge and wave to everybody and say, hey, here we are. Well, we were here all along, just kind of had to use the John or something. This is what this is what you're dealing with. OK, these are not people who are thinking to themselves, man, this would be really clever from the PR standpoint. They don't even think about it. And that goes quadruple for Ben Charrington. If you were to suggest to him on the record, off the record, over a beer, whatever it is that he made any move, any move at all, large or small, aimed at some sort of public reaction, he'd laugh at you, and he'd be doing it legitimately. He just doesn't operate that way. The man exists in a bubble. He's not reading stuff. He's not listening to stuff. He's not on Twitter. Uh, well, okay, maybe once in a while <laughs> he's on Twitter, but he's not the type that's going to be swayed by it. He's just not. And I'll remind here that they kind of could have used Kutch here over the past couple of years, too. You know, I mean, he signed for, I believe it was $8 million with the Brewers last season. That was eminently affordable here in Pittsburgh. Easily could have gotten done. Easily could have saved these guys a whole lot of grief. Maybe even won a couple more games. Was the PR need any less then than it is now? Nope, not really. The difference is, and this was something that Ben spoke about openly at the time, he had what he felt was X number of outfielders that he wanted to get a look at. He wanted to keep moving people uh, in and out. He had between you know Brian Reynolds and uh, ben Gamel, who was going to be the starting outfielder, if not necessarily somebody who was going to be cemented into some sort of everyday status, and he had Jack Sawinski eventually, meaning once Jack made it up from double A and, and just started launching home runs. And he didn't feel right or wrong that Kutch was needed. And he worried, as he stated again openly, that bringing someone like that in could block a younger player. Well, there aren't really younger players to block. Not, not that many anyway. Not that many. Certainly not as many as they might have thought or hoped for. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. Mm-hmm.